Today we're looking at the Savoni SV260 multiband pass filter and I'll be comparing it to not using any filter at all or using a UV-IR cut filter and using a dual band filter such as this Optlong L para filter. Multiband pass filters help you cut through the light pollution but unlike dual band filters these can also be used for imaging broadband objects such as galaxies, galaxy clusters or star clusters. And as you can see in this chart from Saboni's website a multiband pass filter allows you to decrease the effects of light pollution. It excludes the lines that are responsible for light pollution from mercury vapor and sodium but it still allows you to get the hydrogen alpha the oxygen and the sulfur lines which we actually want. It also allows a better color balance by cutting out these light pollution lines and allowing through enough light in the red, green and blue channel to have a neutral color balance. And as you will see in some of the images I will show in a second, uh, this filter does a good job of maintaining a neutral color balance. It was actually very similar to what I was getting without using any filter or just with using the UV IR cut filter which I normally used. Let's take a look at the data. As part of my testing methodology, I made sure that the comparison images are taken at the same time and that the same settings are used for all of the images and they're all processed the exact same way. The reason I'm choosing to compare processed images is so you can see what you're actually gaining instead of just showing a slightly different white balance because I used a filter. So we'll do a processed comparison of an image using the filter and then not using a filter or just using a UV IR cut filter. And so for the uh, top left image, this was with a UV IR cut filter. The right one was taken with the Savoni SV260 multiband pass filter. And the one at the very bottom was taken with the Optlong Alpara dual band filter. Uh, just to see how these filters compare. Now if we zoom into the Running Man Nebula right above the Orion Nebula, we notice that in the first image, which is with just a basic UV IR cut filter, uh, the blues show up quite well. Uh, the area in the middle here, which has some hydrogen alpha components, uh, shows up fairly well as well. And the gas and dust, of course, looks quite nice. On the right, if we look at the SV260 filter, you can see that the blue component uh, on the outside is showing up just as well. I don't notice any difference there, but the hydrogen alpha component here in the center uh, is actually showing up better. So you are getting better results uh, with hydrogen alpha. So it looks kind of like a more enhanced H alpha image. And then at the very bottom with the Optlong Alpara dual band filter, we're getting a lot of the hydrogen alpha showing. However, the blue component on the outside, the, the broadband component of it is is uh, very very dim and is not visible uh, as well. Even though uh, emission nebulae like the Orion Nebula um, are best imaged using a dual band filter if you want to fight light pollution, you do lose out on a lot of the data that, that doesn't shine just in the HA and O3 band pass. So you lose out on some of the blue regions like the area around the Running Man Nebula and you do lose out on some of the dust and gas around the nebula that's not visible as well in the dual band image. So that's one of the advantages of these multi-band or broadband filters that it maintains all of this broadband data as well. So overall I think in this case uh, the best balance of, uh, of showing the hydrogen alpha regions very well as well as the broadband regions um, the winner here is the SV260 filter and as you can see you've got a good amount of detail all around the nebula and up here as well. And of course the Running Man Nebula uh, does look better with the multi-band pass filter. And looking at the bright stars themselves, again uh, no halos, uh, nothing noticeable here. In my measurements the full width half maximum was a little bit um, lower on the SV260 filter meaning that the stars were overall a little bit sharper uh, because I think it has a narrower bandwidth overall than the basic UVIR cut filter from ZWO. Um, and since it performed quite well on broadband objects, I think I'll be using the SV260 filter as my, uh, my broadband filter for light pollution all the time. So since we have imaged the same target uh, with the SV260 filter and the UVIR cut filter, we can do a signal to noise uh, ratio measurement. So on the left is the SV260. So we'll go to image analysis and SNR. 
So SV260, those are the values we get. And now let's take a look at the UV IR. Okay, so SV260, we're getting 43, 43, 42 for each of those channels. And with the UV IR, we're getting 41, 41, 40. Uh, so once again, the uh, signal to noise ratio in the multi band pass filter is higher than just the UV IR filter. Now let's take a look at uh, another target. In this case, we'll take a look at Messier 31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, as you can see from the names, the left image is using just a UV IR cut filter, whereas the right image is using the uh, Savoni SV260 multiband pass filter. And again, we'll use the synchronize option in PixInsight to compare these two images. And now on the surface, they look very, very similar, but uh, we'll zoom into some of the interesting regions in the galaxies. Uh, let's zoom in over here where there are some nebulae. Now, the, since these are only nine minute stacks each, um, we won't see a lot of detail, but enough to, to do a good comparison. So over here, you can see a nebula in the arms of the Andromeda galaxy, and same over here in the UVIR cut uh, filter image. And you can see that, um, it's showing up better in the multi-band pass filter image. The hydrogen alpha does look brighter and redder, uh, whereas it seems a little bit more washed out in the UVIR cut filter. Uh, but if we go to some of the other uh, regions, oh yeah, there. So there's another large nebula over here that's not visible at all in the UVIR cut image. And right down here, you can see some more H alpha nebulosity that's completely lost in the UVIR cut image uh, because of the light pollution. And it uh, can't really be separated as easily. Looking at the broadband regions, the stars do seem a little bit tighter. And since the multi band pass filter has a narrower bandwidth overall, uh, it does cut out a bit more of the bloat compared to just using a UVIR cut filter. But it seems the amount of detail in the broadband regions between the two is very, very similar. Okay, so UVIR, we got 33, 34, 31, and multi band pass, we got 33, 34, 32. Uh, so very similar in this case, but it does look like there is some advantage to the signal to noise ratio uh, to using the multi-band pass filter even in a bright Bortle 6 to 7 location such as mine. Now looking at Messier 45, on the left you have the Savboni SV260, on the right you have a UVIR cut filter. Looking at the SV260 versus the standard UVIR cut filter, I'm noticing a little bit more detail in some of those regions down here uh, that's easier to see than it is in just the UVIR cut filter image. So there does seem to be more data overall. For example, if you look in these streaks on the left, uh, then the, just the UVIR cut image on the right. The difference is more slight in this uh, area because it, it only has uh, a broadband component. There's no H alpha in this view that we're looking at, um, unlike the last two targets that we had looked at. So the view is very similar, but there seems to be a very, very slight edge to the SV260 multi-band pass filter in this case, uh, probably because it was able to better filter out some of that light pollution I was shooting through. And of course, these kinds of filters are more effective against uh, halogen lamps and sodium vapor lamps, uh, not so much against uh, LED lamps. So if the light pollution you're dealing with is sodium vapor or mercury, then these kinds of filters will be more effective for you. However, even though most of the light pollution I'm dealing with around here is LED, I did find that I got slightly cleaner data while using the multi band pass filter compared to just a UV IR cut filter. And if we look at the band pass of the Savoni SV260 and we compare it to uh, another filter like the Oplong L Quad Enhance, uh, we can see that these are the five peaks, the red lines over here, these are the uh, lines where the data is being let through, and the yellow lines here are the light pollution lines that it's excluding or cutting out. So because of these five bands, instead of just two on a duo band filter, uh, like the Optlong Alpara, which I also tested, you do get to maintain a much more neutral color balance than you would with a duo band filter. Uh, so if the objects you are imaging have any sort of a broadband component, or if they are broadband objects like the uh, Pleiades or any galaxies or galaxy clusters, uh, then the multi-band vast filter is definitely the way to go. 
Okay, so with the multi-band pass filter, we're getting 41, 44, 42, and with just the UVIR filter, we're getting 39, 41, 40. So we do get a slightly higher signal to noise ratio overall when using the SV260 multi-band pass filter. And on a lot of color cameras, you have to buy a UVIR cut filter anyway. Uh, so I've decided to replace my UVIR cut filter with the Savoni SV260 multi-band pass filter uh, after seeing the results here. As you can see on these brighter stars, there is no issue with halos either, uh, so this is excellent. Speaking of halos, let's take a look over here. I took some pictures of very, very bright stars using this filter to test its halo performance. You can see the details of the images on the very left over here. For example, this is Aldebaran, which is a magnitude 0.85 star. I did not use any filter for this picture on the left, and this was with a high quality quintuplet refractor, and this is a stacked image of about a dozen images. This is with no filter whatsoever because I wanted to make sure that any halos being introduced are not being caused by the telescope. So as you can see, the telescope itself does not have any halos. Um, you can see some glow around Aldebaran in this stacked image, but that's of course expected because it is a very, very bright star. Uh, but again, no halos. So on the right is a um, is an image of the same star taken with the Savoni SV260 filter. I'll zoom in two times on both of these images. So I'm not seeing much of a difference between these two views. Um, no real issues with halos, nothing objectionable, even on a stacked image of such a bright star like Aldebaran. So now that we have uh, gotten that out of the way, let's take a look at the stars themselves. So. At the very top left is the very, very bright star Capella. And this is a stacked image of about a dozen images. And this is magnitude 0.05. Not really noticing any issue here. And as you can see, yeah, pretty good view. And again, on the right, magnitude 0.85 Aldebaran, no issues. Uh, Mankelanin, magnitude 1.9 still doing quite well and then on the very right we have almaz which is magnitude 3. yep still nothing objectionable even in a stacked image and on an individual image you wouldn't see anything at all of course so i'm pretty happy with the halo performance of this filter and i would rate the halo performance as very good and of course as we saw in the stacked images uh, when you're imaging actual targets and not just individual bright stars uh, yeah, no issues, nothing to complain about at all. As you can see, these two bright stars right underneath Orion, not showing any issues with halos, and neither are bright stars anywhere else in the image. And no issues there. And of course, no halo issues anywhere. Uh, on this image of Messier 45 either. So to summarize, if you live in a really dark sky, for example, Bortle 1, 2, or 3, I wouldn't use a filter at all, or I would just use a UVIR cut filter if your camera requires it. And in light polluted skies, for example, from Bortle 4 to 7, uh, you'll benefit from using the multi-band pass filter. And it's mostly effective against sodium vapor and mercury lamps, but it does enhance the contrast of the HA and O3 regions, even in the presence of LED based light pollution and you will get a higher signal to noise ratio and if your skies are extremely light polluted such as an inner city bordel 8 or 9 backyard uh, then i would just use a dual band filter instead as a as broadband imaging is really hard to do from there anyway and a dual band filter is best suited for emission nebulae but you'll still have a lot of targets to image uh, if you do live in such a light polluted portal 8 or 9 zone. So as you just saw from the test results, the Saboni SV260 performed quite well on broadband targets like galaxies and nebulae. And it even performed quite well on an emission nebula like the Orion Nebula. And it was able to highlight some more of that hydrogen alpha compared to just using my UVIR cut filter. And uh, I think after seeing those results, I will use this as my main filter instead of my UVIR cut filter when I'm imaging broadband targets and actually since I did those tests I have been using this filter instead of my normal uh, ZWO UV IR cut filter. So I hope you found that comparison helpful. Uh, if you have any questions at all let me know in the comment section of this video below and if you want to buy this filter please use the link in the description of this video as that helps out this channel at absolutely no cost to you and you can order it directly on the Savoni website uh, which has free worldwide shipping and you can use the code ABDUR10 for an extra $10 
dollars off your order. Otherwise, you can also order it directly from Amazon and I have a link to that in the description of this video as well. You can download the processed full-sized images that I showed in this video at the link in the description of this video so you can take a look at them yourself and of course you're also welcome to use them as a background or a wallpaper uh, for your computer. And if you like, you can always buy them for prints as well. Thanks again for watching and clear skies.